Hello everyone. In this particular video, we are going to learn sale or disposal of an asset. In the chapter depreciation, we saw the meaning of depreciation, the factors of depreciation, the methods of calculating depreciation and also the accounting of depreciation. In this particular chapter, we also have the sale or disposal of an asset and therefore in this particular video, we are going to completely learn the accounting treatment and also the calculation or the workings that are required in the event of sale or disposal of an asset. Now, whenever we come across this particular term that is the sale or disposal, we very well know that there is surely going to be a gain or a loss on such sale. Therefore, in this particular concept also that is the sale or disposal of the asset, we are going to surely have gain or loss on sale of such asset. So, as we know for every particular concept, we have two aspects that is the calculation part and the accounting treatment. Similarly, in this particular concept also, we are going to have two important things. Firstly, we will have to learn how to calculate the gain or loss on sale of an asset and secondly, we will see how this particular concept or how this particular event is to be recorded in the books of accounts. So, let us start first with the calculation of gain or loss on sale of an asset. As we know, whenever we talk about the sale, we compare two things. Firstly, the cost or say the purchase price and secondly, the sale value. The difference between that gives us the gain or loss on such sale. Similar is the case when we talk about sale of an asset. But here we are not going to consider the purchase price or the cost price. Instead of that, we are going to compare the sale value and the WDV that is the return down value. We very well know that while recording the asset and recording depreciation, what we actually do? We go on reducing the value of asset by the amount of depreciation year by year and what we get is the WDV on a particular day. And therefore, while identifying the gain or loss on such asset, firstly we will have to identify the WDV and then compare it with the sale value. So, let us take down the exact formula. If there is a gain, we very well know that the sale value is going to be greater. Therefore, while calculating the gain, we will have sale value less the WDV, that is the written down value on the date of sale. Similarly, when we talk about the loss, we know that the sale value is going to be less than the cost or say in our case the WDV. So here the loss will be nothing but WDV less the sale value. And in both the cases, firstly we will have to identify the WDV on the date of sale and then compare it with the sale value. What is this WDV? WDV will be nothing but the cost less the depreciation. You can also say book value less the depreciation. At any point in time when we take up the asset from the balance sheet, we will get the book value on that particular day. So, we can also mention that it is the book value less the depreciation on the date of sale. This particular part is now very clear. We very well know what is the gain and loss and what are the aspects that we need to calculate to determine the gain or loss. This particular gain or loss is then to be recorded in the books of accounts. Also, since the asset is being sold, we will have to see what is the treatment in the asset account and also see how are we supposed to record the sale proceeds on sale of such asset. So, we are going to take care of all of these aspects but before that, we need to remember that in case of sale or disposal of an asset, we will have two options. Firstly, record all of the sale transactions in the asset account itself or record all of the transactions in a separate account that is the asset disposal account. That means, that means while recording or say while accounting the sale or disposal of an asset, we will have to check which particular option is being asked. Whether we are supposed to record the sale transaction in the asset account itself or whether they are asking us to prepare a separate asset 
disposal account. We will study each one of them one by one. Firstly, let us take the simpler one. Now, we very well know that at the end of a particular year, we calculate the depreciation. We record this amount of depreciation in the asset account and whatever is the balance of that particular asset is then taken or brought forward to the next year as the opening balance. So, whenever there is a sale or disposal, just keep in mind that firstly it is important for us to identify the date of sale. Once that is done, just go and check in which particular accounting year the sale has taken place because whenever the sale takes place in the middle of an year, we will have to first identify the opening balance of that particular asset of that particular accounting year and then record all of the entries for the sale of the asset in that particular year. Therefore, whenever the asset account will be prepared, it will start with two balance bought down and this will be the opening balance of the accounting year in which the asset has been sold. So, First identify the year and take down the opening balance of the asset that has been sold. Sometimes the asset will be sold at the beginning of the year, sometimes it will be sold at the end of the year and many of the times it is going to be sold at the middle of the year. So we have to keep in mind that the most complex of these three is the one when the asset is sold in the middle of the year and therefore we need to keep practicing the questions that are based on sale of asset during the year or in the middle of the year. So, let us consider such example so that we clearly know the accounting treatment in case of sale of the asset. Let us assume that the asset was sold somewhere in the middle of the year. In that particular case, since we are at the start of an accounting year, firstly we will have to identify the depreciation on the asset that has been sold till the date of sale so that we can correctly calculate the WDB which is necessary to identify the gain or loss on such sale. So, sale value will be given in the question. Along with that, what we also need is the WDB. For calculating WDB, identify the date of sale, calculate depreciation from the start of the year till the date of sale of that particular asset, reduce that particular depreciation and what we will get is the WDB. Once we have these two, then what we are supposed to do is just calculate the gain or loss on the sale of asset. So, let us take down the entries for sale of the asset. Firstly, they will give us the sale value or the sale proceeds at which the asset has been sold. So, the entry for that will be by bank or by cash or bank to the asset. Let us take that down. Since we are recording in the asset account, we know that it will be recorded on the credit side. By bank account and this will be nothing but the sale proceeds or the total sale value. This will be recorded on the date of sale. Now we have taken care of the sale value. What we need is the WDV. For WDV, we will first have to record depreciation. Now this depreciation will be just till the date of sale. So, the second entry that we will pass is for depreciation on the asset sold till the date of sale. Once that is done, we can now compare the opening balance of the asset to the depreciation. Once that is done, now what we are supposed to do is reduce the amount of depreciation from the book value or say from the opening balance that is to get the WDV. Once we get the WDV, now we very well know that the difference between them is going to be the gain or loss. If we look at the account, we can very well identify that here we have the sale value. Reducing the amount of depreciation from the opening balance will give us the WDV and whatever is the difference will give us the gain or loss. So, what are we supposed to do? Just take the total on both the sides that is debit and the credit side. If the credit side total is greater, we need to understand that it is a loss on the sale of the asset and if the debit side is greater than the credit side, then it is a gain or a profit on the sale of asset. So, if it is a loss, it has to be transferred to the profit and loss account and if it is a gain, it will again get transferred to the profit and loss account. So, 
whenever the total of bank and depreciation or say the sale value and depreciation is greater than the value of asset or say the balance of the asset then in that case it is going to be a gain and secondly if the balance is greater than these two values then it is going to be the loss on the sale of asset. This particular account can also be compared with the formula that we have already calculated. With this, we have completed the first important method of recording the sale of asset in the books of accounts. Let us quickly see what is the second important method in which we can record sale or disposal of the asset. As I said, the second important method has the asset disposal account, has the asset disposal account, here also we will have the debit and the credit side. Now comparing it to the first important method, here what we had was the opening balance which we had calculated year by year, but here in the asset disposal account since it was never in the books of accounts, what are the balances that we are supposed to start with is a big question. So firstly whenever the asset disposal account is prepared we will have to transfer the asset that has been sold to the asset disposal account and then pass all of the entries for the sale of asset. So keep in mind that since it was the asset account in the first method, there was no such transfer, there was no such entry because the value of asset was already available in the books of accounts. But when we talk about this particular method, since it is a new account which is coming into existence, first we will transfer the asset to the asset disposal account and then start passing the necessary entries for the sale of asset. Now since we are supposed to transfer the asset, we will have to credit the asset and what will get debited is the asset disposal account. So the very first entry will be for the transfer of the asset that has been sold and therefore it will be asset disposal account debit to the asset account. Once we have the asset, now all of the entries and all of the procedure is going to remain the same. That is, firstly we will have to record the sale proceeds, that is the sale value. Once that is done, we will then have to compare the WDV. For WDV, we will have to take into consideration the depreciation till the date of sale, reduce it from the value of asset and then what we get is the gain or loss. So, similarly, first entry for the sale value that is to be recorded, that is by bank. Second entry for the depreciation till the date of sale. It will be by depreciation account. Now when we talk about depreciation, there are two methods. Firstly, just record the depreciation and reduce the value from the asset and secondly, we will have the provision for depreciation account. In that case, we will record provision for depreciation account on the credit side where depreciation will reduce the value of asset with the total amount of depreciation till the date of sale. So it can be depreciation account or by provision for depreciation account. Any of them, just remember it has to be depreciation till the date of the sale of asset. Once this is done, now we can identify the WDV, compare or reduce the amount of depreciation or provision for depreciation from the asset we get the WDV, once we get it, compare it with the sale value and identify the gain or loss. Similar will be the case over here. Take the totals of debit and credit sides. If the debit side is greater, we are going to have a balancing figure on the credit side and that particular balance will be the loss on sale of the asset. Exactly similar to what we just studied in the first part. Secondly, if the credit side is greater than the debit side, what we get is the gain on sale of asset transferred to the profit and loss account. So with this, we have completed the second important method of recording sale or disposal of an asset in the books of accounts. Just keep in mind, firstly identify the gain or loss on sale of the asset. Then try to identify which particular method has been asked in the question, whether they are just wanting you to prepare the asset account or whether they also want the asset disposal account to show the sale of asset separately. So calculation was the first part and recording was the second important part. 
keep comparing the values in the accounts as well so that we can correctly justify the formula that we have used for calculating the gain or loss on sale of the asset. With this, we have completed the entire concept. I hope that this method of calculating gain or loss on asset is now very clear and now we clearly know what particular entries are to be passed in which particular account in the two different methods. Thank you.